Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom, this time with an in-depth tutorial on follow actions. Recently, someone sent me an email asking if I could cover this topic and I realized I had never done this. And since in Life 11, new features were added for follow actions. Plus there's one new feature called Full Action Chain that I've never seen anyone mention or show. So I thought I'd make a whole big tutorial about everything. So let's get started. So here I've got uh, eight clips in a group. A group means that there is no clip slot in between that is empty. This is how you can use follow actions in clips in general. There's one exception that we're gonna get to. We're in Life 11 and the latest version. And if you wanna get to the follow actions tab, you can just click here and then you can either click on this to turn it on or you can also you can do this with several clips as well at the same time you can just we can just select these and we could either click this or we can press shift enter to turn the follow actions on and now you see that the play buttons are all kind of striped uh, which indicates that they have follow actions happening right let's get to the first one I'm going to quickly show you how the clip follow action tabs look like in Life 10. So here in the bottom left, you have these circles and you have to press the one with L. And here you can first set the follow action time in bars, beats and 16th notes. So after what time the action should be done. And then we've got two drop downs with the actions that are possible. We're going to get into those and then the likelihood of either happening. And this is how it looked in early life 11. You had to unfold a triangle on the top left here. And if it still looks like this for you, this is a sign that you should be updating. So with follow actions, you can have basically clip triggering automation happening that you can set up. This you can do either in a predetermined fashion of your choosing or also randomly. So this can be very interesting to create different variations beats or chords melodies whatever it works for both midi and audio clips as well but only in the session view so let's have a look what options we have here so here we have two drop downs where you can choose what action should be taken and here we've got the setting of like how likely they're going to be happening so in this case the next clip would be played 100 percent of the time we could also add it to like, say, 50-50. And now if I say play the next one or stop, we can just play it and see what happens. So this time, stop one out. And I'm going to keep it simple here to just explain everything. So we're going to go with 100%. So what do we have? So we've got stop, so play the clip and stop play it again, play the previous one. Um, within a group, that means if I set it to previous, we can just do this quickly. You can already see it here. It plays the previous one in the group, which is the bottom one in this case. And if we're playing this one and went to um, next, it works the same way. So basically, you could create a continuous flow as well. The first one in the group, the last one in the group, any clip within the group, which includes the, the current one that you're setting this for, any other clip in the group, but not this one. And then jump was uh, introduced in Life 11. So here you can set it to um, a specific clip. So for example, we could say set it to three, and this does not correspond to the number Clips of in the groups, but the scenes they're on. So this is important to remember. So here, if I play this, you see this one happens. But if we take this one, this group, and just take it down, and we still have it set to three, right? You see that this one on scene three is still playing. So let's take this back here go back to this 
this is that. The same applies here if you want to add more options. And then we've got linked and then how many times of that. So linked means that it's uh, linked to the loop braces. So for example, here we've got just one bar set up. And so it would play this. But if we do it unlinked, that means that the follow action is triggered after the clip has played for the set um, time. Here we can say like, for example, play this. Now it would play this loop once, but we could also say play it four times before you do any, uh, uh, any other action. So in this case, jump to the third. Right, and with unlinked, you see that we've got bars, beats, and 16th notes that we can set. So we could also make it much, much shorter. So we could say like, let's take it to the minimum and play this. So you have a lot of options this way. And one thing that is interesting down here is, uh, is like we could set things to legato. So let's just maybe all have them play other, so any other clip, and maybe unlinked, and to the lower setting, and then we're going to turn on legato. So basically what this means is the next clip is going to start at, this, at the position where the other clip has ended. So let's have a listen to this. So this way you can create lots of very interesting things as well. We could also maybe turn it up. Or you could of course set it to different lengths as well. You know, different clips at different lengths to create interesting variations this way. So um, yeah, so this is basically the clip follow actions. And of course we could also say like, okay, make it more interesting by saying like, always go back to the first one um, half the time and set this to two maybe again. So this is this way you can really, you know, spruce up your your beats or bass or whatever you want to use it on, or even like, you know, soundscapes. And this makes it quite interesting, not just in a live performance context, but also for, you know, messing with things in a studio. So you can just create quick variations of clips, try different follow actions, and then what you can do is we're gonna turn the in out section on and take this uh, other audio track and then we could just record this. I would recommend recording this into the arrangement view because then you can have create overdubs as well. So for example, you could just say like, okay, I want this whole thing to go on for 16 bars, record it. And then you can have take lanes where you can select the best ideas that you know you happen to come up with through you know follow actions so um especially the the randomized follow actions i i personally really like using for this kind of thing and um let's get rid of this again and then we're gonna i'm gonna take this and press shift enter to turn the follow actions off and i want to show you what you can also do, and this is, for example, we can just take these because 
this is the one example where you can have clips work as a group despite the fact that you have an empty clip slot in between and that this is the new feature called follow action chain that i haven't seen anyone cover and so you select the clips right click then create follow action chain and then let's have a look at what this does so here you can see okay so this one went to next 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 here, obviously, there's no follow action because there's no clip. And here you see it jumps to um, to the scene six clip. So it just simply jumps over this empty clip slot. And then here, go into next. So basically, this is a group and it'll just continuously run through. And here you can see that it jumps back to the first clip. So if you just want to have you know a follow action on a track with all the clips that you select where it just simply runs through them and you see linked so they just simply play once through uh, within the loop braces and then go back and cir circle round and play from the first one again then this is the quickest way to do it And uh, I also want to share another trick that you can use, um, which will also kind of come in handy when we get to the scene follow actions. So uh, here, for example, let's say you want to not necessarily have it, you know, skip over this empty clip slot, but have it play as like silence. What you could do is simply, you know, copy this, paste, take the gain all the way down, and now it's an, a, a silent clip. And then we're going to have to uh, take the follow actions out again. Because we don't want to have the follow action chain. And um, we're just going to turn it back on and to select other. And then just play and hope that will also select the fifth. And this way you can also have a pause in the mix. And so before we finally get to the scene follow actions that were introduced in Life 11, there's one more thing I need to show and explain to you. And that is the clip quantization settings. As long as they're set to either global or none, they will not affect the follow actions in any way. But if you set them to anything else, they will. So let's have a look of how this works. So I'm going to set it to eight bars so it's really noticeable. And then we're going to start playback. And this next clip should have already started playing, but we can see that it hasn't. It's still waiting and it's waiting for the eight bars to be over so that it'll finally start. And it does that now. And the same thing happens now with the clips because I've changed this to eight bars of clip quantization for all the clips. So this is something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's have a look at the scene follow actions. And how do we get there? As you can see, I've added some more clips. I'm going to explain a few more things about them later. So let's have a look how we get to scene follow actions. So right now, if I click on the master, I can see that there's a limiter on there. So if that is the case, you do a double click on the scene that you want to access. Or otherwise, sometimes, depending on what you've done before on the master, you might actually just have to click up here once to be shown the scene one settings. So here we can see we've got the follow action button to turn them on and off again for each scene. And then we've got the same action options twice. And then the percentage of how likely they're going to be occurring. And then the action time, just like in clips that were unlinked. So I'm going to 
select the first eight because this is where I have clips and then turn the follow actions on. And I'm going to choose other and also first for all of them and then set them to 50%. And then we can just keep the action time just like this for now. Let's play it. So get really low to have kind of a glitchy thing happening. Right, so far so good. Of course you can make different settings for different scenes as well, and they will be applied to all clips. So what happens if we have not just scene follow actions, but also clip follow actions? So scene follow actions will always take precedence. So they'll come first, and then if there is still time to do the actions of the clip follow actions, they will be done afterwards. So we can just play around with this for now and see how we like that. So let's say we're going to set this to one again. So we'll give it, give ourselves a little bit of time. And then we can say we can turn the follow actions for these on. Make them unlinked and make them just 16th notes. And we could do the same here as well. And then, of course, these will be no group anymore, but that's okay for what we're going to do right now. And so we turn them on. We can just go skip to the next one. Or we can just do always come back to the f maybe the last one. And then make him unlinked as well in a very short time. I'm also going to turn them all on to legato so that the play position from the previous clip gets taken on for the next one to make kind of more interesting transitions. Also you've seen here perhaps that there's no clip stop buttons. You can just do a right click and add stop button or get rid of it or you do command or control E to achieve the same. So let's see what that does. You can see that on the second track it just runs through until the another scene full action is triggered. Maybe change this. Maybe to uh one By the way, if there are no clips on a scene, even if the scene has follow action set, those will not be done. So for example, here we could say like, oh, we want this running through all the way. So we're just going to remove the stop button.
Right. So um, that's all there is to uh, scene follow actions. There's one more thing. And in Life 11, Ableton also introduced a button to disable and enable all follow actions. You can just click on this button here in the master track, right next to the back to arrangement button and click on it again to make it work. So if I'm clicking this, it just works as normal. So it turns off all follow actions, whether it's the clip follow actions or the scene follow actions. And we can turn it back on. And when you look here, um, the button is also mappable. So you could use it as a fail save, for example, for live performances as well. Yeah, so um, I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you next time. Until then, bye.